Hello Art 1 students. So the purpose of this demonstration video is going to be to show you how to actually do one of the profile portraits from your packet. Remember there are three options. You can do this one, this one, or this one. So whichever profile view you choose to do, it is up to you. They do all start kind of similarly and each image does have its own sort of beginning phases marked on the packet. Now on this particular example, which is the one that I'm going to be using, you'll see that it has some measurements marked, like a 12 inches and 12 inches, 6, 6, 3, 3, 2, and those types of things. You can measure if you want to, to actually use a ruler and get used to that. But what I'm going to be doing is mostly just kind of eyeballing it so that I use those measurements as guidelines. So for instance, when it says six inches, I know that's about half. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw my square in here. And I've already done that on this page. It does not have to be a perfect square. Like I said, if you want to measure and everything and make it all as perfect as you can, that's your prerogative. You can definitely do that. But then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just start dividing that square into sort of the grid lines that we see here so that I can then start to place the facial features where they belong. So the first one I'm going to do is that sort of halfway line here, which is actually the bottom of the nose. And most people, the bottom of their nose is approximately halfway between their eyebrow and their chin. So all of these measurements on these um, profile examples are general approximations here. So again, I'm just going to put nose here to remind myself that that is the bottom of the nose. And then what I'm going to do is about one third of the way down on this part that's where my lip is going to be, and that's sort of the bottom of my upper lip. So I'm just going to kind of divide into thirds here. That's about thirds. I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to label that one lip. And remember that that is the bottom portion of my upper lip. And then on the top half, about two thirds of the way up, I'm going to go ahead and have another horizontal line to show where the bottom of that eye goes. So again, I'm going to divide this section into approximate thirds, and then two thirds of the way up is where the bottom of that eye is going to go. Because remember, the eyebrow was here. This is not the top of the head. The top of the head would be significantly higher up than the actual eye, because you've got to have that forehead space in there. This particular example uses the eyebrow, which is kind of up here somewhere, as sort of the topmost part of this particular grid. And I will readjust the eyebrow once I get there, but I just wanted to remind you all of that. I'm going to put eye here. You don't have to label yours. I just find that it's helpful at times. So now about the halfway point here, I'm going to put my first vertical line. And it did not have to necessarily go all the way down, but what that is is where the back of the eyebrow, sort of the, like the corner of the eye is just before that line. And then at about the halfway within this space, I'm going to go ahead and draw my next line down. And this one I do want to go further. I'm going to turn my page so I can draw that line more correctly. Because, well, that's a little off. <laughs> there we go. And then that line is actually going to become the front of the eye here. It's going to also become the back of the nose here and the sort of corner space of the lip here. So you'll see that a lot of things do kind of fall on that line. When you are drawing a face in profile view, the most important thing that you can do is start to learn how to look for where the features line up with each other 
as you move away from the tip of the nose. So like the tip of the nose might be your outermost line, which is this line here. And then as you move away from the tip of the nose, you want to see, okay, what's my next line? And it might be the top of your upper lip. And in this particular case, it is, and it goes approximately halfway between these two vertical lines. And then if I move up here, that's also where the forehead is. So forehead goes approximately here. Upper lip comes out to approximately here. My nose is going to go in just a little bit less than that, or a little bit more, I should say, more from the nose. Back of the nose, corner of the lips, front of the eye, and then the back of my eye is going to be somewhere around here, which is halfway between these two vertical lines. So now I've already spent about six minutes on this profile and there's no face. So right now, I've just got my grid lines there and I am prepared now to go in and start on sort of the outer edge of the face. I'm going to focus first on getting this line, the silhouette of the actual profile as accurate as I can before I add any of the lips, the eyes, and the nose. Because just like when we were drawing the facial features, if you don't get the original line correct for the profile, you cannot fix it with shading. The profile is quite important to get accurate. So I'm going to draw very lightly, especially towards the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and draw that curve sort of going back here to show where it's going to eventually go. So that might be my initial line for the profile. It is very light. It is not super accurate yet. So now the next thing I'm going to do is just to look very closely at the profile that I am working on. And I'm just going to tweak my line a little bit and make it as accurate as I can. Looking for all those tiny little details that really make it quite specific as to the person itself. The upper lip needs to come out a little bit further. Might still need to go just a little further. Because that lower lip does not come out as far as the upper lip. So I need to make sure that I have room for the lower lip not to come out as far. And about the halfway point is where the chin starts to go back up on this side. And it does go up to about here 
and then the ear is about here because your the bottom of your ear is typically about even with the bottom of your nose. So now I'm going to go ahead and just go in and erase some of my original lines. Still not considered done with this actual profile outline yet because then the next thing I'm going to do is one more time I'm going to go through and I'm going to tweak and perfect and make sure that that outline, the silhouette, is as accurate as I can get it. And then I will go ahead and start moving into those facial features. So it will take you quite a while, especially at first, to get used to looking for where the line for the face goes. And chins are a little bit tricky. People do have a tendency to make the chin much smaller than it needs to be to sort of make it look more attractive or ideal. But make sure that you draw the chin the way it actually is because we are going more for realism than idealism here. Because proportion and accuracy matter more than something being balanced and idealistic and beautiful. And yes, that is on your review, guys. <laughs> so now I've gotten my outline for the profile pretty much as accurate as I think I'm going to be getting it. So then the next thing to do is go ahead and just start into the facial features. I'm going to start with the nose simply because I have pretty clearly defined lines for where the nose goes. And again, I'm going to start nice and slow. Just going to start with some of those very, very basic lines. No shading yet, no detail. The nostril is another area where people tend to make it way smaller than it needs to be. If you look at someone's nostril, really look closely, I know it sounds odd, but it does span pretty much the whole depth of the nose when you are looking at a profile view of that nose. So do not skimp on the nostril. Do not take away their sense of smell. So then the next thing I'm going to do is going to start onto my eye here. So that top lash line kind of goes even with this divot, the innermost part of the nose, and just kind of goes, slopes back to about here. And then the lower one also comes to this line, but it's going to curve a little bit more to about here. So that might be the silhouette of the face and then the very beginning steps of those facial features. So then the next video, I'm just going to take the facial features and make them a little bit more accurate. And then my next step would be to erase grid lines and do it all from observation.